Siami and Siami Ben on Zombie on YouTube, Facebook. All praise to the Most High Tata and Zombie. Welcome. I'm honored. I am joined with a brother that I admire greatly who does excellent teaching on YouTube. I want you all to look him up. I will also uh, post a link to his videos. Uh, he, he goes deep. I love it. And um, he also uh, has uh, key Swahili classes uh, that he's doing. doing. And um, he, he posts those as well. But you can join those key Swahili classes live uh, on Tuesdays and they repeat on Sunday. So it's a new lesson every Tuesday. And that lesson repeats on Sunday. So um, I'm honored to have him with us. And um, we're going to go ahead and get this started. So um, allow me to share my screen real quick. And I'm going to do this uh, quick and then bring in my brother, Bantu Zola. Hallelujah. All right, this is um, our subject, the invention of Jesus. The chains are real, come out of her, my people. All right, and you see uh, our brother uh, Bantu Zola put this uh, together, Yesu or Yesu versus Jesus. So I also have a disclaimer, let me minimize my box here. All right. We're not trying to change your mind, convince or lead you in another direction. The intent is to get you to think and see how the Bible has changed or has been changed and the interpretation thereof to convey a certain belief. Now, when people uh, had had uh, transcribed or translated scripture, there was a lot of things that they left out. They had an agenda and they accomplished that agenda. But the time has come that we are awakened. In the book of Exodus, what chapter, verse 22? The Most High is speaking to Masa, Moses, as some call. And he says to him, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith in Zombie, Yisalayela the Solele is my son, even my firstborn. Now we were taught in church, in Christianity, that Jesus. Mm -hmm. was the firstborn, the son of God, and he only. And because of his death, dying for our sins, we can come and have life eternally. But Jesus wasn't around during this time that he was talking to Moses, Masa. He's clearly stated that a solele is my son, even my firstborn. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Let this sink in. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. He's speaking to Moses, the most high. And he said, and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So he's saying that there's going to come a prophet that he, Tata and Zombie, is going to bring up from a solele. And he's going to be like Moses, Masa. Let this sink in. John, the 12th chapter, verse 49. It says, for I have not spoken of myself. This is Yesiah speaking. 
whom Christianity calls Jesus. But we're going to talk about that. For I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And that coincides with Deuteronomy 18. I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So Josiah was a prophet who was raised up from his brethren. And he is a son of God like us. us. Why? Because yeah. he's a part of a solele. Exodus 7, chapter, verse 1. And a zombie said unto Masa, Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. Now, why do I have this scripture in there? Because of what Masa did in the presence of Pharaoh. Because of what Josiah did in the presence of those who witnessed what he did, Josiah also said, these things I do, you can do and greater because we are children of the most high. Now, watch this, Psalm 82 and six. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high. Uh, can you mute yourselves, please? Matondo. So we being children of the most high, we're gods, Elohim. John 10, 34, this is Josiah speaking. Josiah answered them, is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? He's not saying I said it. He's saying what the Most High said. His father, our father, Tata and Zombie, ye are gods, Elohim. Religion, Christianity, renamed and reinvented our spirituality. It produced Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was of an immaculate conception. Spirit mates with flesh. Who is God in the flesh who happens to be Caucasian? So because of what we were taught, this is what we got. Caesar Borgia, Jesus Christ, the same individual. Caesar Borgia was a son of a Pope. He was gay. And it was a painting of him that was done by Michelangelo, his lover. And the painting Michelangelo did, ordered by the Pope, was to paint a photo, a picture of Jesus. So he took the image of Caesar Borgia, his son, the Pope's son, and created Jesus. And this is the lie that has been spread throughout Christianity. I compare this to mad scientists. That's what we have. We have mad scientists who have taken our spirituality, twisted it, added to it, took out from our spirituality, and they gave us another God. And one more quick thing. What we know as the ump, some think is a bad symbol demonic. or demonic, thank you. When actuality, it is not demonic, it is 
a part of our spirituality. The top part of the Ankh, and I apologize, I don't have a photo of it, but a lot of us know what the Ankh looks like. It's curved at the top or kind of have a loop at the top. It looks like the cross with a loop at the top, best explanation. The loop at the top represents the female, the feminine energy. The stem at the bottom, which is the bottom part of the so-called cross represents the male energy or masculine. And then the two sides of the cross represents children, offspring. The female was removed and replaced with another male energy. So you have two male energy and offspring. That's not right. We get gay. It's, it's a dis. It's a dis. Oh, and uh, it's not bad. Just to add quickly, it'll dry like my clothes. Just to uh -huh. add quickly to what he was uh, saying on that, and then we'll get back on here talking about the topic. Uh, the, the, uh, the meaning of the off means yeah, what is better if my Crocs or what? It'll dry off in like 10 minutes less, actually. If my sneakers get uh, wet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the off means life, and it represents life. It's symbolic of life. That is why you have the feminine and the masculine energy, because when the two come together, the male and the female, they create life. So it, it means the word it, that word itself means life and it's symbolic of life. The cross we know represents death. So if you have two masculine energy, you, you can't reproduce life. So hence it represents death. <laughs> Just so exactly. you all can understand what they brought us with that cross of death and not life. Hallelujah. Okay. My brother, Pantuzola, welcome. <laughs> thank you so much. It's, it's a joy to be here. And thank you for that disclaimer. Thank you so much for laying out that foundation before we begin. Um, my name is Avin Gayaka Ngalangala. I'm from the community of Congo. I don't like to say country. I like to say community because I believe that Africa is one, con one country and uh, we just have communities. So I'm from the community of Congo. I'm currently living in India, came here to You went out. Uh, you, we lost you. We got uh, that you're currently living in India, and then you went out. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm currently living in India, and I came here to study. And I'm also from the Zolobantu community. Zola means love, just like how about a Mazambi? Zola is love. And uh, Bantu means people. That's right there. Yes, I'm going to I think we have Mr. V. William, if you can mute. Yeah, Zola means love and Bantu means people. I'm really happy that uh, we have some amazing people from the Zola Bantu community who have joined us for today's uh, conversation. But uh, Victor Salu has joined us as well, but a label has joined us and also... Um, I can see Mr. Pelenga has joined us also. Thank you so much for joining us as well. And also, Brother Robert, all the way in Uganda, has joined us as well. Thank you so much for being here. And also, Brother Nkosi Kangi is also here. I'm excited for you guys to be here to really speak on this. It's really important. The Zolobandu community is basically uh, trying to awaken the conscience of uh, melanated people, African people precisely, in, um, in the whole humanity in general, but African people in speciality. And we're trying to prepare the hearts of humanity for the reign of Kwatulendo, the reign of a thousand years. The Most High said that if we return to him, he'll bring us back to our place. 
So that is our goal to bring back the band to the Israel back to its original place because we are the priests of humanity. You know, Brother Aaron, if you have uh, your children in the house, you have three children, and your firstborn, your secondborn, and your thirdborn, you give a more responsibility to your firstborn to take care of the younger ones. And even if you go out and your last, your, your last bones mess up the house, you would put more blame on the firstborn because you left the responsibility on him. So Bantu people are the leaders of humanity. If you observe nature, there's leadership in nature. If you look at my physical body, my head is the leader. If you look, for example, in the family of ants, they have their queen who is their leader. So nature exaggerates that there is leadership. So even in the human family, they are the leaders, which are the Bantu people, the Israelites, chosen by the Most High to lead the entire people. So when we move away from the Most High, our punishment is more severe as compared to the other ones. So if you look at the tabernacle, there is the, the Holy of Holies, and then there's the pavement. The pavement represents the entire nations, but the Israelites and the Bantu people, the Hebrews, we are the leaders of humanity. So we have to bring everybody back to order. But unfortunately, we ourselves have lost our way. So speaking on this subject is very, very important. Uh, we, we teach in the Zora Bantu class. We are now in class number 27. We'll be having it tomorrow. We try to show images to give a deeper understanding and we invite you all to be able to see how you can participate in the classes to understand more. But the problem is that we have completely been destroyed. An African person, a Bantu, our spirit has been destroyed completely by certain dogmas and precepts coming in the angle of religion. Uh, I know I'm young. Many of you may say, okay, he's young. Why is he speaking to us? I'm not young in spirit, okay? I just happened to be 27 in this life, but uh, I have lived other lives as well. But this time around, I'm much younger than many of you, but my spirit is old. So don't look at the, the young. So it's been six years. I began to ask myself important questions. You know, I had an open mind to think about how can I ask myself important questions about life because some things were not making sense to me. So I began to listen, to read, and then I came across some information. And with the help of Tatan Zambi, I was able to reveal to me certain things also that I did not know. I fought this information for over five years. I said, nah, this cannot be true. But it's only after a long time, you can see Mr. Mazambi smiling. I came to say, no, let me, let me. You, you went out again. We can't hear you. Yeah. Meditate, reflect, pray, meditate. That is how you learn as a student. And sometimes you have to be able to criticize the teacher as well. So I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for the invitation, Queen Brenda. I think she was the first one that I met. And then she introduced me to the king himself, Mr. Manzambi, and we'll be having conversations with him on WhatsApp, on The Voice. And now it's an honor to, to speak to him today. And he introduced me to amazing people like uh, Kosin Kangi, and I met amazing people also like Ms. Vita as well. So I'm really happy for all of you to be here as well. So we are basically, a human being is a mystery. Huh? In spirituality, when we say mystery, it is different from mystic. A mystery is something that exists, but you and I do not know how it functions. We would say it's a mystery. It is different from mystic. You know, today you see we have Zoom, WhatsApp, YouTube. It means some people develop their neurons and studied the air frequencies and they noticed that, okay, we can send information by, by the use of the air. And now they have created Zoom, WhatsApp, YouTube. But before, if you go back in, say, 2000 years ago, people did not know that you can send information using the air. So if you were, to, if you were alive 2000 years ago, you'd see this as if it's a miracle or it's 
something extraordinary. No, it's just because you do not know how it functions. So anything that you do not know how it functions, it is a mystery. It does not mean that it's, it is abracadabra, no. So a human being is a mystery. It means we are a fusion of something spiritual and something physical. Not the word human. The H-U is for humus. It means soil or dark earth. Man is the, I think the name Ish in Hebrew, it means spirit. So a human being is what? A fusion of a spirit and a physical body. It creates a human being. It means the earth is not our original place of existence. We come from a different dimension, but we come into the physical dimension to have an experience to grow in spiritual maturity. So there's a lot of information on this, the arrival and everything you can find in our classes. But we'll just try to summarize because if we're, if we're trying to speak about the invention of Jesus, we have to first be able to understand the history. We're trying to use pedagogic huh, methodology to bring you to the topic easily. Because first of all, Baramanzambi gave an amazing verse that in Deuteronomy, Moses says that the Most High will send you another like me, a prophet like me. Moses prophesied about the coming of Fumuyesu. But the question is, why did Fumuyesu come? Why did Master Yeshua come into the physical dimension? So we'll start with a little bit of history to give you some sort of a backup to be able to understand. So the first civilization started in Ethiopia, Katiopa. In Kakongo, we say Katiopa. It means the center of Africa. That is where the first civilization began. But we arrived a little bit earlier because when we incarnated as spirits for the very first time into the physical body, we had to master the body. Huh? Miss Vita, if you enter into a car for the very first time, you don't become Lewis Hamilton. No, you have to learn how to maintain the clutch, how to use the brakes, the rear view mirror. So it took a long, a long time for us to master the body, to walk, to talk, to develop languages, and to organize ourselves as a society, agriculture. So the time of learning how to drive this car it was a time of unconsciousness. It took a long time. The scientists speak about this as evolution. And then we arrived at a particular point where we became homo sapiens. It means we now mastered how to drive this car and exactly how it functions about 150,000 years ago. But the first civilization, it means when people became conscience of who they were, they were Muntus, they came from the Most High to live here, they organized themselves, it was about 37,000 years ago in Katiopa, the earth was compacted, there were no continents. The first civilization came to a decline around 22,000 BC, we are told in the scriptures, coded of a tower of Babel that led to people being separated. It is a symbolic language. Something happened, thermonuclear war that led to the division of the tectonic plates and people were scattered all over the planet because we, we don't live in a, in a globe, huh? We live in a flat. We have been given all these theories of the globe because of NASA spends $40 billion a year to maintain the narrative but we live in a flat, in a closed system, a dome. So 22,000 years ago, the tectonic place divided. There was a thermonuclear war, which we explained deep about, deep about it in the Zorabantu so class. So the Earth used to have two moons. We call them satellites. The sun had two moons. You know, the moon is some sort of a satellite. It allows you to see what's below. If you study the moon, you can see the configuration of the Earth if you look at the moon. So the moon is more like a satellite. There were two satellites, but because of this thermonuclear war, one of the satellites fell, and that is what created the land mass of Australia. But the people were divided and spread across the entire earth, symbolizing the story of the Tower of Babel. That was the end of the first civilization. The second civilization began in Egypt. Our, our ancestor, Nimi Kongo, Europeans call him now Noah, was by Ethiopia. 
And then because people were spread across the earth by the place dividing, the Most High sent him up to the position of Egypt so he can be at the center of the world and everybody else can come to learn knowledge in Egypt. He had three children, Zola, Ngangu, and Lendo. Today we call them Shem, Ham, and Japhet. They built the Egyptian civilization for 13,000 years, the golden age. We lived in Ubuntu. We mastered science. We had temples of education, temple of science in Egypt. We built the pyramids. We even began the pyramids down in Sudan, in Kush. An amazing civilization was there in Egypt that lasted 13,000 years. And then the Greeks and the Babylonians began coming to Egypt around 1400 BC to learn wisdom from our ancestors. Pythagoras came, Plato came. Many people from Greek scholars came to learn knowledge in Egypt. But after some time, we noticed that the people who were coming did not have the intention to learn but they really came to take over. So our scribes began to write our writings in a coded language to protect it from the enemies. So the story of the, the, story of the, of the tectonic plates was now put into a symbol of the Tower of Babel. The story of the fall of uh, the Adam and Eve and the serpent has now been turned into two people eating a fruit and the serpent. So everything was coded to hide information from the enemy. The Greeks and the Babylonians took the information from the temple, the scrolls, they went with it to the Greeks to, and also Babylonians. They began to study our knowledge and it really helped them to build one of the strongest civilization by then. But before that, my dear brothers and sisters, you know that uh, when the tectonic place divided, there was a particular kingdom which started by the Bermuda Triangle known as Atlantis they began to practice nuclear activities and so many other activities by, by the Bermuda Triangle. And it led to the drowning of Atlantis that we know of the story of Noah building an ark, there was a flood. The flood took place because the Atlanteans were practicing some nuclear activities and it led to the flood. So Noah had to build a boat to go up to Egypt just to go back on this part. So the Egyptian civilization came to an end around 1400 BC with the death of Pharaoh Kenatu. Pharaoh Kenatu began to notice that the priest in Egypt was no longer in touch with the Most High, but was getting all his information from Ra, from the fallen one. So he tried to bring order in Egypt, but unfortunately he was assassinated because one of the prince of Babylon, unfortunately, Pharaoh Kenatu himself made a mistake by marrying a princess of Babylon who gave birth to two daughters for him, Nefertiti and her younger sister. Nefertiti had a very beautiful relationship with his father, but the younger sister was close to the mother. So the younger sister married a prince of Babylon and from the union of Tutankhamun's last daughter and the prince of Babylon, they gave a, a child by the name of Tutankhamun, black person. Tutankhamun was therefore the grandson of Pharaoh Kenatu and Nefertiti was the daughter of Pharaoh Kenatu. But today we are taught by Europeans that it was his wife, no. Because if you go in the pyramids, they're always together and people thought that's his wife, no, that was his daughter. So. The, the, the prince of Babylon who married okay. to, and also, yeah, we can hear you. Yes, yes, I'm yes. sorry, go ahead. You, you were okay. out for a little bit, but go ahead, you're fine. All right, so he kills his own son, Tutankhamun, and he kills his own, uh, his, his own uh, father-in-law, Kenatu, and he becomes the new pharaoh in Egypt. I think in the Bible, it mentions that uh, a new pharaoh came in Egypt that did not know about the history of the Israelites. 
So the people in Egypt had to move away from Egypt, led by Massa, to go back to the heart of Africa. So there was a big exod which led people to the heart of Africa. So I'm trying to give you this history to give you an idea of why the, why the Most High had to send Master Yeshua, who we call Jesus, and other religious people, or Yesu. So the exod was very heavy. I think you know about it, Nehemiah, Isaiah, Daniel. We arrived in the heart of Africa about 690 AD, after the death of Yesu. So there was so much chaos. The Greeks and the Babylonians began to kill the Bantu people. They followed us everywhere, trying to get rid of us from the face of the planet. And you know that um, the, 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 the Greeks were succeeded by the Romans. The Romans began to rule the world. I think Jesus came by the time the Romans were in power. And the Romans took over. I think uh, Alexander the Great came in Egypt. He took everything. He destroyed Egypt completely. The Bantu people ran into the heart of Africa. Some of them found their way in, upwards in Canaan because today we call the Middle East separated from Africa today, but no, the Middle East is actually just North Africa because in the 17th century, Napoleon gave the idea of cutting the water to create the Suez Canal because ships were rotating around the continent of Africa. It was a long distance. So they needed to cut the waters up to allow the ships to pass. And that's how the Middle East was created. But the Middle East is actually just North Africa. So um, Master Yeshua, Master Yeshua came, it is debatable, but Master Yeshua came in North Africa 2000 years ago because the people of God were nowhere to be found in the world. They were scattered, being killed everywhere, and they lost their relationship with the Most High. So Master Yeshua came 2000 years ago in North Africa to teach the Bantu people, the Israelites, the way back to the Father. This is very, very important. Now, I'd like to open a bracket here to say that there was a group of people in the heart of Russia called the Khazarians. There were a group of people who lived in a savage and in a very immoral sort of life. They come from the heart of Russia. They are the Turkish people. Because the Europeans had a plan to come later and colonize Africa, and they knew we were people that were very spiritual, they could not defeat us by military. They had to use a strategy of spirituality cooked in religion to basically colonize African people. So the first thing that they had to do was they wanted to steal our identity. So in 50 AD, I think 70 AD, Emperor Titus invaded Jerusalem, chased all the remaining Jews who were there and they ran to Africa. And the people who were in the heart of, in the heart of Russia in Khazaria, I think it's around the 800th century, their leader, Shagan, he came across the Talmud book, the book of the Semi people, descendants of Noah. He read the book, Brahman Mazambi. he read it, he said, no. Because by then there was a crusade between the Muslims and the Christians. These people did not want to become Muslims or Christians. But their king read the Talmud, the book of the Judaism. He was so impressed with the book. He called three black priests, Hebrew black priests, to his assembly to teach him everything in the book. They taught him, and then he asked him, he asked those people to teach his entire people this book, and everybody became a Jew by proselytism. They adopted our religion. The Talmud was written in the Hebrew language, which, which is Kikongo, but they put it into their language of Kazaria translated it and became Jews by proselytism. Now, this was well planned by the Luciferian beings. 
to take these people and replace them in the Middle East as the actual Jews. So they left Caucasia, they came to Europe and presented themselves as the true Jews, descendants of Abraham, Jacob, and Noah, but they were the imposters. But the real Jews ran to Africa. So in the Talmud, Master Yeshua, his name was Yesu, but when the Kazarians put it in their own language, it became Yehoshua. So the Hebrew that we know today, it is the Hebrew of Kazaria, but the original Hebrew of the Talmud is the, lang is the language Kikongo. This is how these devils took our identity. We, on the other hand, ran to Africa and they became the Jews because even today, the Palestinians know that these are not the real Jews. So let's, let's talk our identity. This is just to give you a little bit of history of exactly uh, how this happened. So because they had the intention to come later in Africa to colonize Africans, they had to change their savior or so-called the leader that came to teach them about the Most High to become of the image of these Kazarian Jews. It is a very difficult thing, my dear brothers and sisters, what happened is because if you look at Yeshua, who was born in North Africa 2,000 years ago, in the Council of Nicaea, 325 AD, a group of Roman people came together to decide on what should be or what should not be in the scriptures. They took the writings from the Greeks and the Romans that they took in the temples in Egypt. They completely designed the entire book. They tried to manipulate other texts which they were not able to manipulate. They removed it completely. Like for example, the book of Enoch was completely removed because they could not manipulate it. But other books they were able to touch there and manipulate it. They completely changed the locations. They changed all the characters in the Bibles and made all the characters to be completely white. They changed the names. So Master became Moses. Noah, I mean, Nimi Congo became Noah. Zolanga and Lendo became Shemham and Japheth. They changed the entire name. Jacobo became Jacob. So they took our writings, they completely whitewashed it. 325 BC, my dear brothers and sisters. But they came to the heart of Africa for colonization in the 14th century. After having developed a colonization manual, my dear brothers and sisters. Everything was set and then in the 17th century, you know, slavery began, began all that. But what's more important here, my dear brothers and sisters, is the Greeks and the Romans, they believed that the white race is superior because the Greeks and the Romans, they believe in the theory of evolution of Charles Darwin, most of them, that the white race is absolutely superior as compared to the black race. So they had to create an identity of a savior who does not exist by changing completely his name, his origin, his circumstances of birth. And they did this by design before coming to colonize our ancestors. So there is a lot of falsehood around the person of Master Yeshua. They had to change so many things to turn people into ships to make us people who do not reflect, people who do not reason, so that every time we try to address spirituality, we may, they may find us to be idiots if it's not in the angle of religion. They tried to make us into men and women who do not think. And most important thing, they wanted to erase the history of a people. The history of the people of Master Yeshua, they wanted to completely erase it to prevent us from having a good understanding of exactly what happened. So the question that we have, my dear brothers and sisters, is why did they have to change his name to Jesus? You know, King Manzambi, today, if you go to China, uh, if you go with your amazing queen to China, 
your name is Manzambi Zola. The Chinese would not change your name and start calling you Shin Shan Shui because they are failing to pronounce your name. Because of the respect of your personality and your culture, they would have to make sure to see how they can learn how to pronounce your name, Manzambe Zola. They would not need to change your name. No. So they had to change the name of Master Yeshua to completely erase the connection of the history with his people. The second thing that we have to look at is why did they have to make his birth miraculous? Because the first thing is they have to change his name. Because even the name Yeshua, I've showed you with the story of the King Shagan from the Kazarian, they changed his name to Yehoshua. So Yehoshua is not even his actual name. His name was Yesu. And I like how Baramanzambi says it, Isai. of a father and a mother, he would not be a Lord. If you read, for example, in James chapter 1 from verse 13 to 17, I think I opened it, if many of you have your Bibles, something very important for us to read there in James chapter 1 from verse 13 to 17. If the king is there, he can read for us from 13 to verse 17. James chapter 1, 13 to 17. Okay. <clears throat> James chapter 1, verses 13 to 17. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of a zombie. Mm. For a zombie cannot be tempted with evil. Neither if anybody is tempted... No one should say the most high is tempting me for mm -hmm. anybody can be only tempted by his own desire. Okay, go on. Yes. Uh, verse 14, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his mm -hmm. own lust and enticed. Hallelujah. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Hmm. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh hmm. down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. In whom there is no variableness and no neither shadow of turning in my scripture here it says who does not change like shifting shadows the most high created everything perfect and in the most high there is no shadow of turning it means the most high does not first of all tempt anybody and neither does he is tempted by anybody and the most high the creation and everything that he has created is perfect and has no shadow of turning. It means, I like what Miles Monroe used to say. He used to say the Most High is sovereign until he speaks. It means when the Most High speaks, his words becomes law. So the Most High created everything. It's run by laws and it suffers no favor or because it is the most high these laws has to change no there is no shadow of turning it means the most high is obligated to obey his own law because people think because he's god he can do whatever he wants when the most high set a law in nature that for a child to be born there's a need of 23 chromosomes from the mother to the egg and 23 chromosomes from the father to the sperm for the fetus to grow in the womb and then the spirit can incarnate. That law is perfect when there is no combination of the chromosomes, 46 chromosomes, it cannot happen, never, my dear brothers and sisters. So 
They wanted to hijack his birth to lie to ignorance. My dear brothers and sisters, it's very sad because they have made us believe in this foolishness to think that the Most High can intervene and change his own laws when he wants. The Lordship of Master Yeshua is not because he doesn't have a father. Your wife to be is innocent in the act. It doesn't mean it is the Holy Spirit that intervened to get Mary pregnant. The Holy Spirit is in a different dimension. God the Creator does not have a penis. God the Creator does not have a spermatozoid to, to, to fertilize the womb of Mary. This is this kind of things, it's absolutely, it's not, it's not true, it's not natural. So the question is, who is his father? We know who his father is, but we will not give you everything. We will not give you food, cook for you the food and give you on the table and make you start to eat the food. No, you have to also exercise knowledge and seek the most high to be able to understand these things on your own as well. We cannot give you everything for free, no. You have to also make an effort on your side. So Joseph, Joseph is a great man, Brother Manzambi. Hmm? For example, where I come from in the Congo, when you want to marry a woman, you go and give the bride price to the family. And then she's, let's just say she's legally almost your wife already before the party and all that. And then later on, you come to discover that the woman you want to marry, she's pregnant. Joseph said, okay, no, look, you're pregnant. Have your child by your own. Please don't get me involved in these things. Joseph wanted, to, Joseph, Joseph wanted to walk away. But the Most High spoke to Joseph in a dream and said, no, you see, don't leave her like that and be with her. Because Mary even cried, Miriam. She cried to the Most High. Why, have I, why has this happened to me? Because Mary was a victim of something that happened to her. But the Most High gave her a promise to say that the spirit which shall come to incarnate into that particular child is going to be a great person. You know, but the question is, why did the Most High choose this particular situation in a place of poverty, in a manger, to bring in a divine being into this particular point? Because, you know, as African people, we always look to things which are glittering like gold. Hmm? If Baraman Zambi is coming to you in a plane, you know, jet, private jet, yeah, wearing very expensive suits, you listen to Baraman Zambi. But when, when the most high sends his prophets, they come like simple people. Hmm? That's why the Israelites had a difficulty in accepting that Master Yeshua was the one that the most high sent to show them the right way. Because we as African people always look at high places, if he's a president, if he's a minister, if he's a general in the army, but Master Yeshua was just a, a man just like, like, like them. The Bible even says that he, he did not have anything special to look at when you looked at him. He was a simple man. But because of our behavior of materialism, we thought that the Most High would send us someone in the sky flying and making noise. The Romans, you're dead. No. My dear brothers and sisters. So, the first thing is they had to change his name to remove the connection with his people. The second thing, they had to make his birth seem miraculous to turn us into sheep to think that the Most High can change his laws at any time. It's unfortunate. And the third thing is they claimed that he was Lord because he performed miracles. My dear brothers and sisters, it's because we do not know the understanding 
of what a miracle is. A miracle is simply an acceleration of a natural process whereby you get what you want in the immediate instead of in a long time. That's what a miracle is. It does not break a natural law. It is natural in the sense that particular act, it simply accelerates the natural process. We see in the scriptures, for example, Master Yeshua was walking and then he found a woman who has been bleeding for 12 years. It means she had a problem in her body. And because of the divinity of Master Yeshua and the power and the presence, it accelerated the healing process. And then she got her healing in the immediate instead of waiting for a long time. Because if, if she had to wait, it means she had to, first of all, live in the right way, increase her vibration, continue to be with the Most High, and then it will take a long time. miracles the last thing is they try to change his mission into a salvation mission of him dying for you on the cross which is absolutely wrong because even the meaning of the cross but Zambi and queen just gave us an example of the ank the woman the masculine energy the feminine energy and the children the symbol of the cross relationship with the most high the vertical bar relationship with your neighbor, the horizontal bar. Master Yeshua came to show us the way back to the Father because we're in darkness. He wanted to teach humanity about the laws of the Tanzambi and to show by his own life how he lived that we too can do the same. So we are not saved by his death. No, these are the teaching that was added to religion. I like to always give this example. Ibar Rosario has joined us today. Ibar Rosario is a professor in the University of Manchester in the UK, and he's invited to teach, say, marketing in Uganda to the students of marketing, some concepts and principles of marketing that they don't seem to understand. He leaves the UK, he comes to Uganda, he begins to teach them about marketing. And the students begin to understand the concept because of this professor, Rosario, oh my God, he's making the concepts much easier to be able to understand for the students. The students begin to like Mr. Rosario, oh my God, you're teaching us in the right way. The other professors in Uganda, the local professors feel jealous because the students seems to like Mr. Rosario and they kill Mr. Rosario in Uganda. Later, the exams for the marketing comes and they have to write the exam for marketing. Do they pass the exam because Mr. Rosario has been killed or do they pass the exam because Mr. Rosario taught them those principles of marketing? No. So the death of the professor is not why you excel. It is what you were taught by the professor that makes you excel. So it is not by the death of Master Yeshua on the cross. As a matter of fact, it was an assassination. Lumumba assassinated, Magufuli assassinated. He was, his life was shortened. He was killed by the Romans, by the Sadducees and the Pharisees. It was not that crime on the cross that took away your sins. No, life is effort. You have to work. You have to respect the laws of the Most High to be able to uh, get closer to the Most High. So spirituality does not make us uh, become stupid. Spirituality is supposed to make us to become even much wiser, my dear brothers and sisters. Mr. Manzambi showed us a picture of Caesar. Uh, because the Romans were coming to Africa, they said, okay, we need an image. But it's very, it's very weird for a white person to bring a black person as a savior to black people, he's planning to colonize them. No. So it made sense for them to change the entire person of the of the of Master Yeshua by making him white. And they took an image of a person who is gay, partner of Michelangelo, and we have these pictures in our homes. It is, it is very sad. So the invention of Master Yeshua was to hide people in mental prisons. The invention of Jesus was to lock people in mental prisons in the matrix 
to make us into sheep, not to reflect, not to think. And his death was turned into, his life was made into miraculous by birth. So it really made a fool out of ourselves. Because six years ago, I would fight you if you taught me wrongly. So I do understand our fellow Christians, but you have to exercise that willingness to learn that uh, yes, who was the son of Africa. He was your brother. He was just like you. He did not come from somewhere else. And his teachings has been changed. Most of the teachings of Master Yeshua is not, it's not what we are, we are taught in the gospels. Most of his teachings was removed and they changed it into their own teachings. And you can see then you, you can notice that he enforced the teachings of Paul and they have completely uh, brainwashed us. And uh, worst of all, if you read in First Thessalonians, they speak about um, when the dead in spirit shall rise and we shall meet the Lord in the air. No, to be dead in spirit is to be spiritually asleep. Huh? Raman Zambi said in the beginning, when you are asleep, it means you are dead in spirit. Huh? The Bible says there, those who are dead in spirit, together with those who are alive in spirit, like all of us here, we shall meet the Lord in the air. It speaks about ascension, spiritual awakening. It is not the dead people in the graves <laughs> that will rise up. <laughs> it is not natural. Huh? When a body decomposes on the on the when a body decomposes, but Manzambi is laughing. When a body decomposes on the on the ground, it is gone. Dead dead bodies will not rise from the graves. No, it speaks of spiritual awakening. So Paul says it better. When the Christ in me awakens, is an experience of glory. It means when your spirit awakens, you begin to live an experience of glory. So he says, when Christ is in me. They don't speak of Jesus Christ, the man. No, they speak of you, the Nzambi, in you. If you arise, Master Yeshua said, you carry your cross and follow me. It is not the cross of Golgotha. No. So I know in the other Hebrew community, the image of Master Yeshua is taken completely to be European because we do not know the story behind it. Huh? Yeah, because they think, no, Jesus, no, is Greco-Roman invention. They really cooked us, eh? Queen Amani, Queen, Queen, uh, Queen um, Ibeleng. They cooked us in our own water. Uh, they are very smart. They are very wise. They knew exactly where to get us, and they got us. So they cooked us in our own water. They presented us our own, but cooked up as their own and uh, it's not that when they came with the white jesus we accepted no many of them um, because when they when the missionaries came they were teaching the story of this man and our ancestors said no you're talking about yesu they said no we're talking about jesus because christians think that yesu came after the europeans came to our land and then we translated their jesus to our language yesu no we already knew about Yesu. When they told us about his life, we said, no, you mean Yesu, not Jesus. But because of, the, because of colonization, they wanted to impose, they whipped and killed people to accept these things. And then they taught their children in the Catholic schools to accept these ideas. So the invention of Jesus is one of the biggest scam in the history of humanity. And he was our brother. He was just like us. He just simply came to show us the way back to the Father. Uh, uh, his life is what we need to follow by following the 42 laws of the Mahat. Moshe squeezed them into two, I mean, into 10, the 10 commandments. And Yesu basically squeezed them into two. Love God with all your heart and all your mind and uh, with all your soul and love your neighbor as yourself. So Moses knew about Yesu. Isaiah knew about Yesu. Uh, I know there's uh, always this uh, debate because the image of Christ has really been polluted. 
as they show us, the image has completely been polluted by those free beings. And uh, we have completely been taught something new. And many of our brothers and sisters in Africa, they are stuck in the religion, praying for a white person. It is very sad. It is actually demonic because you are creating egregores around something which has absolutely nothing. People go to church, they're spending time in their churches, wasting energy, praying to something that does not even exist, an invention. So it's, it's very sad. So the invention of Jesus, uh, when you begin to know this knowledge, please stop, stop even calling the name Jesus. Use the name Yesu. Use the name Yehoshua. He was our brother and he was not born of a virgin. It doesn't happen. Uh, everything that comes into this world, it has to pass. It has to respect the laws. And if the son of God, uh, if the peace of the most high had to come and be born as a woman, then why would angels be flying in aliens as aliens in alien ship coming to earth? Uh, the most high, Jesus had to come and be born. He had to incarnate. The divine being had to incarnate. And yet you think others come on spaceships as aliens. Uh, it's, it's very uh, unbelievable some of the things that we believe. So I'm telling you, when, you, when you're a Christian, uh, you, you really believe in certain things. They have really destroyed our spirit. They have destroyed us completely. And it's very sad. It hurts in my heart because I have family members who are still in Christianity. Sometimes they see my post, they say, uh, you have become an occultist, you know, things like that. So it is, it is it's a painful journey. That is why it's called the cross. Huh? It's, it's heavy. You lose your friends, you lose your family members. But um, the physical body, my mother, and my father, they gave me this physical body, true sex. But I have my brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters because in the, of the flesh. We come from the same womb, but my real brothers and sisters are you that's listening here because we have a short presentation that we had to on, on the invention of Jesus. We shall speak about this in depth in the Zorabantu class. Here I've just given one particular part, but um, in the Zorabantu class, we shall explain uh, why he had to come. We shall explain all these things that we explained today. We shall also explain uh, the teachings of Master Yeshua, what exactly they teach in depth. We shall speak about this more in the Zorabantu class, but I really appreciate you all for, for being here and listening. Over to you, great. Um, yeah, that was, that was excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know, um, brother on here that some people uh, say Yesiah too, like we do. Uh, we know that some of our, our Bantu, uh, fellow brothers and sisters on the continent said Yesiah as well. So, uh, don't want to confuse anybody. So I want to bring, bring that out also, um, so it's, it's a preface. We just say Yesiah because we know a lot of our Bantu brothers and sisters on the continent. That's what they say is Yesiah. I do know that some people on the continent say Yesu. I remember some years ago being in another class with this brother from Africa that does teaching from Ghana. We was with him for maybe about a year or so. And that came up about Yesu and uh, one of the sisters, I think she was a con. She said, this is all I ever knew. This is what we called him, Yesu. Mm -hmm. So some say Yesu, some say Yesiah. Yes. Yes, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I, I love the way you explained it and, and laid it out, you know. Um, yes. yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, there was so much that was going through my mind. You know, the one thing is um, I wanted to say if if uh, our Savior, Yesu or Yesiah, uh, came by uh, spirit as spirit uh, with flesh, you know, uh, the scripture says that the spirit came upon Mary and she was with child. And Yesiah, you know, was telling us that we're to follow him 
and to, you know, imitate him. I always ask the question, how? You know, mm. uh, if you were not born like I'm born, male and female who come together and produce me. And the church says that you are God in the flesh. That's unfair to me to live the life that you led. Mm. That is unbalanced. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because you, there's no way you can experience what I experience. Right? So that's unfair to me. So I couldn't conceive that. That he was born, you know, of the spirit, you know, uh, spirit and flesh, you know, uh, mm. I, I couldn't get that. And then the mm. other thing is, if the most high imprisoned the spirits that came and made it with the daughters of men, mm. if he mm. imprisoned them, why would he in turn let his own spirit come? and lay with a daughter of man named mm. Mary. Mm. Sounds like a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> and that's always bothered me. It gave me 